my line of work, there has been no singular event that I would call a breakthrough. It's it's basically been a long and windy road, hard work towards a goal. I want to emphasize to 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 those those coming into the industry, which is is waiting for that hit and that that breakthrough. I would say it doesn't necessarily happen, and it isn't necessarily the single. Uh, and the best development for you. I found that that the slow progression, where where you aim for a goal, you set up where you want to head, and then you start working in that direction. You meet obstacles, you work your way around them, and you slowly develop more experience. You, most importantly, by time, you develop more and more of a sense of the aesthetics of where and what you want to create. In our early days of venue recordings, we tried to bring speakers into these makeshift control rooms, but we usually spent a huge amount of time and we still didn't achieve a result we could actually rely on. So. Uh, over the years, I've come more and more to rely on headphones when recording. Because the headphones give me exactly the kind of information I need to know and need to trust. Uh, and that is, what is the microphone picking up at its current position? Because I need to make that choice. Should I move five centimeters closer, 10 centimeters up? out to the sides, and the headphone gives me that. But to be able to make that work, you would also have a very, very good home base uh, as a mastering studio, because you need to uh, develop that experience. You need to make the recordings, remember what it sounded like on headphones, bring it into your studio, listen to it in a good room on good speakers, bring it back out on your next recording sessions, back in the studio again, out on the next recording session, and going back and forth a hundred times, you can do pretty much anything and have full control on headphones. The reason why I emphasize this is that, especially with students, Traditional professors say, oh, you can't record and you definitely can't mix on headphones. Yeah, you can do that. But you need to relate it to a speaker environment. So you need to build experience. Going back and forth between headphones and speakers, you build that sense of the transfer functionality, which make you secure on headphones. I've used Sennheiser headphones uh, ever since I started out with uh, audio. Early days it was 250s, the 500 series, then the 600 series, and at some point uh, Sennheiser brought me the 800s, and that was in springtime, and I put them on and say, oh, I can't use this. Then summer came and I had a couple of weeks off and I brought them forward again and I listened and I listened and I listened. They were just so different from any other headphones I've used before. But after those couple of weeks, now I can't use anything but the 800s. Uh, I'm addicted. I have no clue what I would ever do if all the 800s in the world was destroyed. I would start all over. Yeah, it's, it's, it's true. Our philosophy of microphone technique in these recordings is very, very simple. We take the speaker array, which you see around you here in the studio. This is a 7.1.4 setup. 
we shrink that array down to a smaller size and place a microphone where every speaker is later to reproduce this. And then each of those pickups, they preserve the correct time of arrival and intensity and reproduce in each their according speaker. I have a distinct love for omnidirectional microphones. And then I'm talking true closed chamber uh, omnis with a single membrane. Already when I went out of academy early 90s, what I did back then was to buy myself a pair of DPA 4003s, a power supply, and straight to that. And that was how I recorded for the first years. Here's a recording of a jazz trio. It's a classical piano trio with the grand piano, the double bass, and the drum kit. As a listener, you're placed with an array of microphones in the middle of the ensemble. Right in front of you, you will have the grand piano, the lid taken off, and then the double bass is standing on the raised platform, playing across the soundboard of the piano into the main array. And the drummer is in your back. We used larger membranes, 4041s, equal microphones for all seven positions in the bass layers. And in the height layer, we use smaller diaphragm uh, DPA 4003s. And they are all powered on a higher phantom. So we use the high power supply from DPA. We also capture at an extremely high sample rate. Working with the Pyramix system, we're able to do everything in 352.8 kilohertz, 24 bit what I call DXD resolution. Not to be confused with DSD. This is straight PCM. As a simple makeshift acoustic adjustment, uh, we have a couple of crates of, of log fire, which we just throw on the floor uh, underneath the piano. Uh, in this particular church, that's because it's, it's a quite a hard surface uh, of natural stone under there. So we just want to break it up and do some diffusion there. And behind the drummer, to take the reflection of the end wall, we found some cushions lying around the back of the church. We brought them and just spread them on the hard floor. <laughs> 